is not my opinion, okay? <laughs> not my opinion. So don't take it seriously. Okay? <laughs> not my opinion. In fact, <laughs> I, I accept this because I am not sure. <laughs> I am not sure. Maybe that fellow is true. Tomatoes are not meant for us at all. How did we know? Did God come and tell us tomatoes for you? Did he come and tell us these are the things that for, for you to eat? Did he tell us? No. Even in the Gita he only tells don't eat old things. Because I think the Gita was written at the time when there was no frigid air. God knew frigid air will come. <laughs> God knew. Krishna knew fridge will come. But then at that time there was no fridge and therefore he said that. So don't eat old things. But here we eat only old things. We don't eat new things anyway. <laughs> and so, and so, <laughs> so God said, so don't eat old things. And things like that, he says, not yushnam, not ishitalam, etc. He had given a big list, but never said, yet plan, you should not eat potatoes, keep them off, keep them away. And tomatoes, don't think of. And this bell pepper is, is to be is to be just avoid. Don't take. These are all night shade plants. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. You know. What is this night shade plants? I don't know. <laughs> I have no I have no idea. These are all night shade plants. And so people repeat the same thing like parrots, you know. So we say they are night shade plants. How do you know they are night shade? What do you mean by night shade? Let it be night shade plants. So what? This is not sunshade, it's nightshade. So okay. So nightshade plants. So how do you know that they are bad? Who told you that they are bad? Rishi? And who is the Rishi? I say, who told this? Oh, Japanese told. I say, Japanese are good in electronics. Who should she say? <laughs> because they take everything from, from, from Silicon Valley and then make it nice and bring it in. And therefore, how do you know? So how do you know that these fellows are Maharishis or what? So how do you know? How this is different from the other plant, I don't know. I have no idea. And therefore nobody really knows what is food. Nobody knows. Only cows know what their food is. They are very definite. <laughs> they know. If they are not domesticated cows, they know. If they are domesticated cows, they are confused. We will confuse them also. <laughs> we will say if they eat this, then they will have more fat, etc. So we will we will feed them with all kinds of things. If they are wild in the forest, they know what is their food. Well, the animals know what they what the food is. Every tree knows exactly what its food is. The orange tree, so it draws from the earth, from the same earth. Where sugar cane is growing and it can take in a lemon tree. So we'll take things that will make the lemon sour and make the other orange will make, take things. <laughs> well, so from the earth to make the orange sweet. Sometimes it will be sour too. That's a different. So there's some confusion. No confusion. This particular, that's a particular orange it is. Well, therefore, they, they, know, they seem to know their food. And the animals, if they are not interfered by human beings, they know their food. But we do not really know anything about it because we are not programmed. We are not like animals programmed. And therefore, we can never be certain about anything. Food you cannot be certain about. And any conclusion you make medicines, my God. <laughs> How many patis are there? There are so many. So they say, this is a medicine. This year they say, this is the medicine. Next year they withdraw everything. <laughs> Cases against all these fellows. And millions of dollars also the juries sanction against some of these companies, etc. Why? Well, new discovery shows, even though it is a medicine, it has got some, some bad after effects. <laughs> after effects means you disappear. And so... <laughs> so they, And well, therefore, so you are, you are not sure about anything. You are not sure about anything. This is why, because therefore, you are doubtful. Anything 
Pramana Siddha is going to be doubtful. Therefore, you can never have final knowledge about things that are known to be existent. You can never have, understand this well, you can never have a final knowledge thus far, no further. You can never make this statement and get away with it without being wrong with reference to things that come to be known to be existent through varieties of means of knowledge. Only one thing that you are definite about is I am, I am definite. That is generally, that is the reason why you doubt everything else you doubt. <laughs> when it comes to yourself, you never doubt. You know, you never doubt. That's why a lot of people do not question whether about the self. That is why I told in the morning, if you tell your dad that I am, I am going to the camp to discover the self, <laughs> and dad will laugh. <laughs> not only laugh, no, he'll, he will he'll become serious. Something happening to my child. And well, because that self is something, it is self-evident, self-existent, nobody bothers. Even whether it is self-existent, I have to tell. It is self-existent. It has been self-existent. But nobody bothered to know whether it is self-existent or it is Pramana Siddha. Whether through a Pramana it is established, well, nobody bothers to know about it because it is so self-existent <laughs> that you don't think that you should inquire about it. Look our pursuits. All our pursuits are only with reference to things that you objectify, you know. About them you question all the time. But the inquirer, there is an inquirer, there is an observer. And that person is taken for granted. In other words, I take myself for granted and plead to everybody else, don't take me for granted. Don't you say that? At home there is always a problem. Don't take me for granted, I'm not a chair. Who told you chair can be taken for granted? Even chair cannot be taken for granted. Suppose a chair is always in that corner. You know, one corner there is a chair, which is your usual chair. And now you go there with the newspaper chronicle in your hand, and you just go and sit there reading the, the green page, you know, your green page, whatever. And so, or what is that? Herb Kane? Herb Kane? That guy? <laughs> Herb Kane. Yeah. <laughs> so Herb Kane, okay? So a lot of, he has got readers. He has made it, it seems. And he writes, a, he writes there, there was a, an interview with that guy. It seems he has made his life. Because there are a lot of people who read his column. He's got that single column in the Chronicle. Okay? Now you read every day. That is your morning tea along with your coffee or whatever you read is this column. And holding this paper, you go and sit there in your usual chair. Unfortunately, that chair on this particular day was not there. That was removed. When, the, when she was vacuuming, she removed the chair and forgot to put it back. Don't take the chair for granted. <laughs> Number two, suppose the chair is there, don't take it for granted. It may not have all the four legs today. Yesterday, dad, all right. <laughs> today, there is no rule that it should have all the four legs. One day, it loses the legs. And therefore, you cannot take even a chair for granted. You always say, don't take me for granted. But you take yourself for granted. Reason is very obvious. As I told you, I am self-evident, self-existent. Everything else is known to be existent. So whatever that comes to be known to be existent is open to question. And what is self-existent, I take for granted. 
Thus, I make a division. I is self-existent. This I is self-existent. And everything else is known to be existent. If this division is clear, then we have to see this I and this object is there a relation. What is the real relationship between the I and the object? Does the object exist entirely independent of I, which I come to know? Then the objects would definitely isolate I. Why? Because what I know is overwhelmingly huge. It is huge. There are varieties of things. And some of them known, some of them unknown, endless things are there in the vast expanding universe. So millions of things, I can't even count them. And I am one single person. If that world, this object which I come to know through a means of knowledge, is something that is entirely different from I, I am, I am isolated by the world. Therefore, I become one among many things in the world. But then there is a certain uniqueness. I cannot pass one among the world. One among the things in the world. Why? Why? You tell me. Why? Because I am not one of those objects. I am a self-existent I. There is a uniqueness about you. And therefore, my understanding that I am one among many. One people will say, no, he's one in a million. That doesn't make any big difference. <laughs> you are one in a million. That is fine. You are one in a million. But then what? There is one in a million. Means among million people, this one fellow is unique. <laughs> unique. That's not enough. I'm not taking your one, even though you are, you, are, you are unique, but still you are one among the million. So that means there are million people, of them you are one. You may have some unique faculties, some unique, unique what you call accomplishments, but still you are one among the many. Well, therefore, so if this one thing is definite, I am unique when I say there is no other, other thing in the world which is as, which is as I am. I am self-existent and everything else is, everything else is known to be existent for the self. Therefore, you are unique. You are unique. And this uniqueness is exactly how unique you are. This one uniqueness I told. This self-existent I, which, which is unique now, then how unique it is. He tells it is so unique <laughs> that you should recognize it as Brahman. It's a very big word. Brahman. Now the question is, what is Brahman? <laughs> to recognize I as Brahman, I must know what is Brahman. This unique self, the self-existent, unique self, is said here as Brahman. Then I ask, what is that Brahman? Then he says, Satchidananda Lakshan. Then what is Satchidananda? Then he gives another further. Then he connects both, that I fulfills the lakshana, the definition of Brahman, for which he gives a reason. The definition of Brahman is this, and I fulfill the definition of Brahman, therefore I am Brahman. Understand? I fulfill the definition of Brahman, he gives a logic for it, then afterwards he says, this is Brahman, now therefore, so we have to say this self-existent, unique self is Brahman if it is, 
then what is that Brahman? We have to see. Then how can that Brahman be me? Again we have to see. This is the whole teaching. We will see that in the next session when we meet, okay? Now it's time for you. मोहाब्धये नमः अनंतानंद कृष्णाये जगन मंगल मूर्तये अहमस्मी सदा भामी कदाचिन नाहमप्रिया ब्रह्मई वाहमतस्सिद्धम् Satchidananda Lakshanam To continue existence of oneself requires no proof. One is therefore self-existent in the sense self-evident. Of course, one's existence is self-evident. When we say self-evident, we mean it requires no proof. The existence of the self is self-evident, therefore it is self-existent too. The self-existence has got something more, we'll see that later. Now, everything else is known to exist. <coughs> 